Welcome to Room Service, I'm Sarah Richardson. Have you ever wondered if it's possible to create a space that is both sophisticated and kid-friendly? This blank canvas living dining room says yes in a big way with retro color and eclectic style that blends clean, modern lines and exotic accent pieces. Then we're off to New York City to meet with Canadian design star Karim Rashid and set a creative foundation for fine dining. When you combine all the right stuff, it's a space the entire family can enjoy, and it's only on room service. has the classic Victorian layout. Living room at the front, dining room directly adjoining. One of the things that's been done to update this room though is that they've removed the wall that was in between the living dining space which creates one open area. It also sort of maximizes the ceiling height and the tall windows. Another thing that really adds to the ceiling height and the sort of overall feeling of drama in this room is the drapes. They've already been installed and it's a cream and graphite silk taffeta and they hang floor to ceiling. You'll notice it's the same drape in both the dining room and the living room, which helps to connect the two rooms and give it a more cohesive feel. Overall, we're going to be using this as our direction for the color palette. I'd like it to have sort of um, a a formal but casual feel at the same time, which is an oxymoron, we know, but having two young children, um, we don't want to fool ourselves that we can rope off the area and have no one's uh, fingers all over the place. We'll keep our furnishings light and sort of neutral in feel. I'm thinking about a pair of chairs here that will help to define the space and divide the living room from the dining room. We're going to need to incorporate a rug here that will add softness and also create sort of a, an area for overflow for little kids to sit on the floor. You have to think about coffee table and lighting and also artwork, of course. As for the dining room, you can see it's picnic style right now. So we need to think about a table and chairs. I'm thinking of going along the lines of Art Deco, uh, streamlined in quite a rich wood tone. We are sort of struggling with listening to the bones of the house, which is a Victorian row house, but on the other hand, listening to what we like, which is a more contemporary feel. As for seating, I think we can fit at least eight or ten chairs, especially if we stick to a sort of smaller size. And I'm thinking this would be a great way to incorporate uh, some more color. So we could do an upholstered chair, maybe in a rusty, orangey color, and that would have strong impact in this room. Overall, we're looking at incorporating modern amenities with clean lines that also has a bit of a nod to the past. The starting point for a room that is destined to be filled with color is a classic pairing of charcoal and cream, like a good morning paper paired with a hint of espresso before it wakes up to a dazzling array of intoxicating shades of burnt orange and saffron yellow. It's our idea of the spice road to turn up the heat and revive an otherwise subdued palette. It's accents of tangerine and gold, lustrous finishes and rich textures that help us add just enough excitement to feel the fire of fun. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. out, the temperature is rising. It is an absolutely beautiful day. So I'm doing what all good designers do. I'm going shopping. Believe it or not, shopping in a large store filled with merchandise has a certain technique. And what I do is I like to just stand back and sort of unfocus my eyes and take in everything at once. If there's anything I really love, it'll jump out at me. For example, from this vantage point, I've already seen about five things that could work in the room, starting with this little side table. This is just a tray top table, very contemporary design, great price point, and it offers a flexible option. You can remove the tray and use
use it for serving, if you're entertaining, and it has quite a slim profile. Also done in an oak finish with a sort of ebony stain on it that could work really well with our floors. Just in front of this table, here's an ottoman. And ottomans can be a terrific solution in a room where you don't have a whole lot of space and you have little kids. This is an oval ottoman. It's done in a charcoal gray. That would work really well with the drapes. And even better, it's on wheels. So if someone bashes into this, they're not gonna hurt themselves as they would on a more traditional coffee table. Another thing, lighting, always important. There's a seashell covered lamp that has a cylindrical cage and it's individual seashells all tied on. This is a really interesting piece and I think it's something you should focus on when you have a small space. You can't bring in a whole lot of different elements, so each one that you do bring in has to have a certain presence to it, really. Another table over here, it's a nesting set of tables. I think the wood color would complement the ebony finishes, although it's sort of hinting more towards a rosewood tone. Nesting tables can be a great idea if you're tight on space because you can condense them or bring them out so that you have twice the number of tables or three times the number of tables when you're entertaining. The next step to doing all of this after you've seen all the options is take them home and try them out and see which ones work for you. Coming up on Room Service, a mix of design eras takes shape in the living dining space and modern design philosophy from a Canadian in New York. One minute, it's an empty dining room, and the next thing you know, this place is ready for a party. Well, almost. We've got a few big changes that have happened in here. I found a light fixture, which we've installed from the ceiling, and it is very simple in its design. It's an Italian fixture, and it has three lights with square frosted shades on them. The only downside to this fixture is that one of the shades got broken during shipping, so a new one's on its way to us. Beneath the fixture, you'll notice the table, and this is a mahogany veneer table. It's done in an Art Deco style. Notice the base, you'll have to look at that from the side. And it has this veneer on the top that has all been matched together and it forms a really elegant design. To set off the color of the mahogany, we decided to use a sort of rusty burnt orange as our accent color in both rooms. On the chairs, these are ones that I designed, we've gone with a low back and we've used a corduroy and we've run the rib on the corduroy horizontally for a really clean look. One last thing we brought in is a new buffet. You'll notice the old buffet in behind just didn't really work anymore with the more sophisticated furnishings that we were going for. So we've introduced an antique Chinese cabinet. It has some floral painting on the front and black as the body of the cabinet, which sets off the ebony color of the floors and, of course, our taffeta drapes. So we have taffeta with antique Chinese, with contemporary Italian, Art Deco reproduction, and my own chairs. Well, just imagine what we're going to be doing in the living room, but you're going to have to wait to see that till later. wondered if there are any rules about mixing and matching different types of woods in a single room? Well, as far as I know, there's no hard and fast set rules, but here are a few that I follow. As long as the wood tones are picked up elsewhere in the room, you can mix them together. There's a couple things you do need to keep in mind, though. For example, the old sideboard didn't go with the mahogany because it just wasn't sophisticated enough. The mahogany that's on the table, I decided not to repeat on the chairs because it would be too close in color to the color of the upholstery. I wanted a bit of contrast. So what I did was mahogany on the table. I'll repeat mahogany again in the living room. I've done ebony on the legs and then ebony is on the floor. So it all works out in the end. Industrial designers are responsible for a multitude of products that we use in our everyday lives. We travel to New York City to visit the studio of Karim Rashid, a Canadian designer known the world over for his cutting-edge designs that combine bold shapes and colorful materials to create designs that cater to the needs of a changing market. What is the creative process for this young talent? When I think about projects, I actually don't think of it in isolation, meaning that I don't look at it as a singular thing. I think about it as a kind of contextual object or what I would call, let's say, an extensive product. 
meaning that it has to move and end up in the rest of the world, or it has to work with other things, or other contexts, or other environments. So I don't really focus strictly on the chair. I kind of focus on, let's say, ideas, issues that would inspire the physical chair. There's a bias all the time when I design that I'm always thinking about youth culture in a way. So I think about how you know young people sit you know, how they use a chair today in context versus traditionally how a chair was used. For example, the chair I'm sitting in right now is very upright. But, you know, when I teach and I have my students, they all kind of like sit like this, right? So it'd be nice to, you know, develop a chair that affords them to slouch, you know, kind of the slouch chair or something. When Karam first started in design, he admits to being an ultra-modernist, using mostly black and white and only primary colors, if anything. Now he uses some of the most explosive colors, like the fluorescents that have become almost a trademark for him. You can slap color on anything, and I, I'm, I'm very careful with color. And yet, when people always say to me, oh, your work's very, very colorful, that's the first reaction. I never think about my work as being very colorful. Then when I look at it, I realize it is colorful. But I guess the colors for me are, are, are kind of very well thought out. They're not just, you know, I decide to do orange, red, da, 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 da. You know, I'm very specific. It's very important to have some humor in this world. And so I kind of interject into my work humor. And the humor can come through the material and the color and all those sorts of things. Karam has applied his youthful vision of industrial design to a wide variety of products, rendered in dazzling colors in a multitude of materials that express his modern sensibilities and allow the end users to appreciate the fun side of design. I know this sounds a bit pessimistic, but our human condition can be very, very banal, right? We got like, you wake up in the morning and you do kind of like do the same thing over, like this routine and years go by. And so what I think what I'm trying to do in this kind of very simple way is to increase those moments of pleasure. And I figure if you can have one of those experiences a day, maybe you're really alive. <laughs> Things that I would love to do that I have some fantasies and dreams about is I want to design an all-plastic house. There's a lot of those kind of larger projects like that. I'm doing my first, let's say, real architecture. I'm doing two buildings from scratch. There's so much in the built environment that I, that I want to do that it's, it's, I'm just, I think like everything in life is that there's what you want to do and there's also the opportunity, you know? And when those things come together, it's amazing. Next on Room Service, our passion for orange is going strong as we create placemats that dine in style. Our dining room table has a mirror-like finish and our accent color in the room is a rusty shade of orange. So I thought I would combine the color palette for the room charcoal, cream, and orange with an innovative solution for placemats. What I found was some masonite boards. These are really inexpensive and available from your art supply store for less than $2 a piece. And what I'm doing is I'm creating hard placemats. These are ideal for a family with kids because they can wipe clean and they also have a really crisp look that will accent our dining room table. So here's what to do. Start by taking your masonite board and you can use a sanding block and lightly sand off all the edges just to make sure that it's nice and smooth. Once you've done that, coat them with a latex primer. Try to avoid too many brush strokes. They will show through on the paint finish. Then you can set that aside to dry. Now, here's one that I did before, and it is already dry. Now, the next step is to choose a background color. I've decided to go with this orange, and I am using these little foam rollers. These are ideal for small painting projects, and the good thing about the foam is it doesn't leave much of a texture. You have to have a bit of a balancing act. You can feel like you've got your paint palette here. Okay, so once you've covered the whole surface, just roll back over with your little roller, dragging it so that you have a consistent pattern all the way across. 
And then here's another one that I've already allowed to dry. And as you can see, two coats, it has a nice chalky finish and we're ready to go. Now this is the easy part. You can get carried away, you can do something freehand, you can do whatever you want. But this, I will tell you, is going to be your friend. I'm using a low tack painter's masking tape. And I've got some pieces ready to go here, which are getting all tangled. That's very nice. Whoop. Okay, now you can use them just to set out a pattern. What I want to do is I want to create a band right in the center. Now you can measure this all out if you like, or if you're like me, you can do it freehand and see how it turns out. And now you can start to paint. Once again, I would recommend you can use the small foam roller and I think, oh, this is always a tricky part. You know, the good thing is that before you paint, you should take a look at your design to make sure that all of your tape is in the right place. Because I messed up my pattern. Da, da, da. See, this is so easy. The neat thing is that depending on how many placemats you're making, you can use a variety of different patterns. Okay, now I'll go for my charcoal. Now what you'll want to do is allow these to dry and then while the first one dries, you can move on to the next one and come back and do a second coat on the entire pattern. But just so you can see how it looks, I'm gonna pull the tape off after doing just one coat. Okay, see, there we go. This will need to dry for a little bit. And the last step that I would recommend, or the second last step I should say, is to apply a coat of a, an oil-based urethane all over the mat and this will give it, I, I put two coats on, it'll give it a bit of a sheen and it'll give it a protective finish so that you can just wipe this clean. And then the very last step is that we don't want anything that will scratch the table. So I'm using some felt. Now this is available from uh, any fabric supply store. Set on the felt. And then, voila! In no time flat, you'll be diving in style. In days gone by, marigolds were revered as magical plants that could strengthen the heart and bring clear sight. It was believed that simply gazing upon marigolds would lift the spirits and cure melancholy. They have many healing properties and are a natural antiseptic, good for a whole host of ailments. And several varieties of marigolds are also edible. Marigolds are valuable plants in the garden, too. They discourage many pests as they attract our admiring glances with their lacy leaves and brilliant petals. Next on Room Service, our eclectic living dining space inspired by all things orange. Let's face it, we all have color combinations that remind us of our childhood, and I was born in the 70s, so corduroy and orange reminds me of some pretty bad outfits. And that's why I find it slightly amusing that it has now become the hot color in design, and so many people of my generation are incorporating it into their houses. And look at this place. We have covered it in shades of rusty red and burnt orange throughout, and it really creates a warm environment. My favorite thing throughout the entire two rooms is really the color, the orangey red color. It's something that I never would have imagined that we were gonna go for, and as soon as we saw the carpet, which was the first element of it, we just went for it totally.
So let me take you through what we've done here. For starters, we brought in a carpet, something really, really soft, because we wanted this to be kid-friendly. There is no family room in this house, so the kids have to be able to come in and play in this room. That's a bit of a challenge. How do you create something that's both elegant and child-friendly at the same time? Well, we went with a soft wool carpet. This is a Tibetan carpet, and it sort of has a strie in that soft, rusty red so that it won't show the dirt, and it's also quite simple in its design. Then we decided to keep this space open. Now, I know I went shopping for coffee tables and I brought them in and I really liked the way they looked, but once the kids came into the room, there was no room to play. So we took those back and we decided just to go with a collection of small little tables instead. So everything is flexible and movable and we've brought in enough small tables that there is a place for everything to be put down. We've used our tray table over here with the shell lamp that I found when I was out shopping and I just love it. it creates such an unusual look in this far corner of the room. Then we have three of these small sort of leather topped tables which can be just pulled up beside each chair. And on this side I decided to fill this unused space with a collection of shelves. This is a chimney breast and so we just went with the depth of the chimney breast here which was about six inches for the top three shelves leaving them about 15 inches apart and then we made the bottom shelf deeper at about 15 inches so that it can double as a side table and that's a really good use of space there wouldn't have been room to bring in another table in addition to it and the black is really graphic and it sets off the framing that we've used on all of the artwork for artwork again we needed to go with those orange colors so we brought that in everywhere on this side there's two mixed media pieces that combine a charcoal etching with some sewn together pieces in all those shades of red and brown. We've done a 12 ply mat with a really big mat around it to give it some space and a dead simple black frame. Now for seating we needed to have more options here so we've got extra chairs from the dining room that can always be brought in for entertaining but we decided to keep the space as open as possible. I went with two armless chairs here leaving enough space that you can walk in between which is key. You want to have as many points of access into this room as possible and we covered them in a sort of soft mustard colored chenille that works with the sofa that was already here. A couple of pillows and a standing lamp just focuses your attention on this side of the room and acts as a divider. As for the dining room, well you've seen most of it but we've done a few finishing touches. We've hung a mirror above the sideboard, added some accessories, and then I brought in a silk screen of a feather and it's gone long all the way across the dining room table. And again, of course, it's in our signature shade of orange. It's a nice combination of being sophisticated but also friendly at the same time. I'm so happy with the way it all turned out. We've managed to create a space that is both kid-friendly and elegant and sophisticated for entertaining at the same time. And it blends all of the right stuff. I'm Sarah Richardson, and I hope you'll join me next time on Room Service.